Hello, hello. Happy Monday. Thank you so much for listening to Bold Moves with Mandy Bryce. As you've probably guessed, I am Mandy Bryce, the host of this lovely podcast. And today I am chatting with Sherry Cox, who is a professional organizer whose life was changed after her mom was diagnosed with cancer. Of course, that is a life-changing situation, but she was able to find a silver lining and really live her life on her terms as opposed to just following the random path, which is exactly why she's the perfect guest on the Bold Moves podcast. She started her own business as a professional organizer, but not the way you are probably thinking, where it's just office spaces and homes. She actually does organizing of the mind as well, which I thought was really interesting. What I thought was even more interesting is that so much of this stuff was self-taught and really found by looking within. Now, obviously, Sherry can tell you a lot better than I can, so without further ado, please enjoy my interview with Sherry Cox. everyone. Welcome to Bold Moves with Mandy Bryce. I am with Sherry Cox, who is in Toronto right now, and we're hoping to not have sirens because she's right downtown. But if you hear some, we apologize. Welcome to the show, Sherry. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. I'm so excited to chat with you. Now, of course, the show is called Bold Moves, so obviously that means you're here for a reason. You must have made one or if you're like any of the other guests, probably several bold moves in your life. So let's hear a little bit about your story and what brings you on the show today. Well, where do I begin? So I'm originally from Ontario. Uh, I grew up in Peterborough, Ontario. I went to college in Peterborough. Then I moved to Toronto. And from there, I moved out west to Vancouver. And at that point in my life, I was feeling a little bit lost and just needed some direction. So the next, I guess, five, six years to follow, Mm -hmm. I worked in the hospitality industry and I would save up money and go traveling. That's awesome. What did you do in the hospitality industry? I was a server. Okay. Yeah. So it was really great. There's a lot of flexibility with that. And um, I was able to leave and come back. And leaving and going to different countries and seeing different places and how people live Mm -hmm. was definitely me stepping out of my comfort zone. But one of the most amazing experiences probably that I've ever had. And I would definitely recommend it for anyone. Where is your favorite place you've traveled so far? Oh, that's so hard. (laughs) You know what? The first trip that I went on was to South America. Okay. And it was amazing. Um, Probably there, I really loved Argentina. Okay. Lots of fun. And then went to Italy and Greece. Love Greece. Santorini was amazing. And then went to Australia. I did the one-year holiday working visa, which was great. Mm -hmm. And then went up to Southeast Asia So it's really hard to say or pinpoint one place that is my favorite because they all brought something different and a new experience. And for me, a lot of growth within myself. That's awesome. So I, I interrupted. So let's hear a little more about what happened since there. Yeah. So after I did that for years, I went back to Vancouver and I decided at that point it was time to be a little bit more grounded and settle down a little bit. So I stayed in Vancouver and then I moved back home to Ontario and I moved to Toronto. It would be just over three years ago. Okay. And for me making that jump, I was in Vancouver for 11 years. Mm -hmm. You know, you build a life there, you, your friends become your family. So stepping out of that comfort zone and coming to an amazing city, a very vibrant city, but a new city was a bit scary, but I knew in my heart it was definitely the right decision. And off I went, I moved to Toronto, and I was here for, let's say, four months. And at that point, my mom was diagnosed with cancer. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. And within that experience, there was 
so much sadness and fear around that. And it was in that experience that I knew that I had to do something, that I couldn't live every day in fear and in sadness. I would wake up in the morning and I would be walking to a client's place and the whole way there I would have tears in my eyes. But as soon as I would get to work, it was sort of game face on. And through that, that's when I really started to make a really big shift in myself. I knew something had to change. I knew that I needed to do my best to be strong in a really challenging situation. And that's when I really got into shifting my mindset and really pushing myself to live a life that I really felt passionate about and wanted to live. And a big part of that, you know, it often does, it starts with ourselves. Right. And really digging into what was going on within, what was going on in my mind and making that shift, making those bold moves and just overall taking control of my life. I love that. I'm going to back you up just a tiny little bit. So I noticed yeah. you said you were walking to a client's place. I assume that you are no longer working as a server at that time. No, 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 I'm not. So no. what, what are you doing? I am an organizational coach. Okay. So, so what does that entail? So I help clients create organization inside and outside themselves. Okay. So when it comes to outside yourself, I help clients create spaces it could be a home or office mm -hmm. that is organized, that functions, that flows, and that is comfortable. We spend a lot of time, especially in home, and it's so important mm -hmm. to have an environment that we want to spend time in. And for me, I grew up in the most organized home ever. My mom okay. was so organized. And growing up, it was one of those things that I didn't really... I guess, appreciate that mm -hmm. environment. It actually bothered me at times. And I would go into the cupboards and I would shift things around, to see <laughs> if, you know, create a little bit of chaos to see if my mom noticed. And of course she did. But it was when I, you know, had my own space that I really started to myself see and feel the difference being organized made. You know, when I would come home and there would be maybe clothes lying around, dishes in the sink, versus when I would be in my space and everything was essentially in their home, mm -hmm. I really, again, could see and feel how I felt. And so from there, I started working with clients, helping them create a home, a space, an environment that really supports them. Mm -hmm. And after working with a client, even just for a day, it's so amazing seeing the shift in them mm -hmm. and how pumped they are and excited they are to make that shift in their environment. So that's kind of how it started. I started working with clients, helping them organize their and declutter their space. And then it was when my mom was sick that that's when I really started to realize that not only can our space be cluttered, but our minds can be cluttered as well. Mm -hmm. and I needed to start with myself, and that's when I started taking control of my thoughts, my mindset, and really tapping into what thoughts were cluttering me and not supporting me, and what thoughts were uplifting me and supporting me. And so my goal is to not only help clients create organization, outside themselves, but to create organization inside ourselves to clear the path to live the life that you want to live. And what are some ways that, obviously, I don't expect you to do everything that you would for a client or explain it all in great detail, but I think most of us, or at least for myself, I'm familiar with the idea of a professional organizer who comes mm -hmm. in and kind of helps you declutter, perhaps set up systems decide where things go, et cetera. How does that work though internally? Internally. Well, what I have created is a four-week program mm -hmm. 
that helps you jumpstart to step out of your head and into the moment. And I think that's one of the biggest things is, you know, life is busy. We are just in our heads so much. Mm -hmm. But when we step away from our head and into the present moment, into our heart, I like to say, it is amazing the clarity that we see. So I have a four-week program that works with discovery sessions with myself on top of using gratitude, journaling, intention, and motivation to step out of our heads and into our hearts. Okay. I've also started recently a YouTube channel where I provide tools that we can use in our day-to-day life to step out of our head and into our heart. And one of those things would be, for me, a big tool that I use is meditation. Okay. For me, every morning and sometimes later in the day, but in the morning, I'll start my day with about a 10-minute meditation Mm -hmm. and just focusing on my breath and that in itself gets me out of that clutter and aligned with where I am and in that present moment. Okay, very cool. Now, has this been always your own business, even from the beginning before you added the internal part or do you slash did you work for someone else? How has that worked so far? I've so I have my own business. So I've always worked with myself since I've started being a professional organizer, Mm -hmm. but I have worked with other organizers. So when I was in Vancouver and I started to, you know, tap into the difference being organized was making in my life, I did start to do research into other organizers. Mm -hmm. And so I was given the opportunity to work with other organizers and see how it's done. Sure. And the lay of the land. Very cool. So, but it's always been your own business. You just kind of found mentors to learn from. Yes, definitely. Okay. Very yeah. cool. What made mm-hmm. you decide that this is what you're going to go into after your time in the hospitality industry? It's definitely a u- unique path. I maybe know two others <laughs> who do the same thing and I don't think they do the mindset part. So I'm very curious about how you got started down this road. For me, it just all kind of flowed together. And I think one of the biggest parts is I truly believe that being organized makes a huge difference in your life and it really does help enhance happiness. Mm -hmm. So for me, I think a lot of it came from personal experience. It was stuff that I went through that I saw that I overcame and then from there started working with people and really seeing the difference it made in their life as well. So that is a perfect segue to what my next question would be. And I guess you can answer from your experience as well as the experiences of your clients. What are the types of things that you've seen as transformative results from both the exterior or like home organization or office organization, as well as the mental organization you're talking about? When it comes to client spaces, I think one of the biggest things is you, the energy shifts. As soon as we start to get through that clutter, clear it out, it is amazing just the energy shift in a space or even sometimes reorganizing the layout they have, Mm -hmm. it makes a huge difference and you really can feel it and they can feel it as well. When it comes to them personally, I think a lot of the clients that I've worked with, it's a buildup over time Mm -hmm. that they have a cluttered space or a cluttered mindset in them. I can see a massive shift in their energy. Um, You can just tell that this weight has been lifted off of them. They feel really inspired and motivated where prior to this, they just feel heavy and stuck. 
Okay. And you see that they want to make the shift to empower their life and live that life, that authentic life that they want to live. Very cool. That sounds like a refreshing thing that I hope to accomplish when I move in a couple of weeks, which will be in the past by the time this airs, but yes. <laughs> I'll be thinking of you when I start putting things away. And <laughs> you will. You will really notice a difference. And that's really exciting for you, creating that new space. Right. I do to look call forward home. To that. That's always so exciting. Absolutely. So I'm curious, and I guess once again, I'm asking both for the interior and the uh, exterior organization. Have, are there certain methods that you follow? I, I know I've read the um, Marie Kondo book. Um, a, what is that called? The Life-Changing Art mm -hmm. of Tidying Up, mm -hmm. um, which I had mixed feelings about. But I'm just curious, you know, where you kind of, has it always just been something that you've naturally done? Or are there resources that you've learned aside from those mentors that you worked with? I definitely have for sure read up on organization, especially online. I look into a lot of articles, read a lot about it. For me though, it has all just kind of come for me within and my intuition with my clients mm -hmm. and all spaces are different, but how I will work when it comes to someone's space is first of all, you know, we'll go into the space, we'll see what's going on. I'll figure out where their problem areas are. Mm -hmm. And the first step is always going through everything okay. and figuring out what they need, what they don't need, what they would like to keep, what they would not like to keep, and getting through that clutter. Mm -hmm. And then from there, that's when I'll come in and set everything up for them, find a home for everything, and create that space that vision that we had. Okay, great. So you don't necessarily follow feng shui or that whole, like, does this bring me joy thing from the Marie Kondo book or anything, but more so just kind of chat with the client, determine their needs, figure out what will best suit them based on your own experience and intuition? For the most part, yes. You know, figuring out what their needs are you know, seeing their space, figuring it out, figuring out the best way that would make that space uplifting for them. Mm -hmm. For me, I definitely do agree with things that spark joy. You know, even yeah. with myself, I will from time to time go through things. And if it doesn't feel good, if it doesn't feel right, it is really amazing to let go of that. So I definitely do love that concept of mm -hmm. things that do spark joy because it's also one of those things that sometimes we keep things and maybe, you know, we'll put it away. Mm -hmm. I'll, you know, you put it in a drawer or a closet or something, even though we can't physically see these things, we know they're there. Mm -hmm. And that right there, even though we don't feel it right away, it does shift in us a little bit mm -hmm. and with our energy and it does affect us. So it's really important to decide and figure out what is important to have in your space, what you need and what you need to let go of. Interesting. So Ooh. do you work with people just in Toronto or do you do some like Skype sessions or how... If someone's interested in working with you, how do they go about it? When it comes to organizing someone's space, I do mainly work within the GTA, the greater Toronto area. Mm -hmm. I have traveled for clients as well, but mainly in the greater Toronto area. When it comes to stepping out of your head and into your heart, so decluttering your mindset, mm -hmm. that is done over Skype. Okay. Very so I cool. do that online. Awesome. Where can people find you online if they're interested in more information? They can find me online on my website. So sherrycox.com. It's C-H-E-R-I-E-C-O-X.com. And I'm also on Facebook. You can look me up under my name, organizational coach. That's where I usually post my YouTube videos. Okay. So everyone can get a look at those. 
Is that a personal account that we are friending you on or is that like a like page that we can follow? That's a like page. Okay. Yes. Yep. So that's my business page. Very cool. So yeah. I am curious, what is your purpose? If you know, if you don't know, that's totally fine too. <laughs> my purpose. I think that my purpose is to help others. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think through my work, helping people with their space, helping people with their inner work, mm -hmm. that is my purpose. I think I am here to help others. And it was one of those things that it took me a while to really acknowledge that mm -hmm. and be confident in that and be aware of that. But I would say that is my purpose. That's awesome. And to live a happy life. Absolutely. Excellent. I think that's one of the biggest things. That's awesome. Yeah. And mm. that's why I quantified afterwards and said, you know, if you know it, because for a lot of people, that's something that either they're still chasing or that evolves over time. So yeah, that's awesome. And I think it's great when people choose one that isn't necessarily super specific because then you can kind of work your purpose in different ways. So mm -hmm. I think that's a great answer. Yes. I'm curious, what is the scariest thing you have ever done? Oh, the scariest thing I've ever done. Hmm. I would say one of the scariest things I've ever done is maybe when I moved from Ontario to Vancouver. Okay. Leaving my whole life behind. Mm -hmm. I did move with a friend, but moving there, not really knowing anyone, mm -hmm. not really at that time knowing what I was going to do, sure. but really stepping out of my comfort zone and taking that leap to mm -hmm. something new. There was a lot of fear around it. Even though I knew it was the right decision, there was a lot of fear. Sure. So I would say that right there was probably one of the scariest things that I've done. For those of us who don't have awesome geography skills, about how far is it from one place to the other there? How far of a move was it? So, well, I flew which would probably be a five hour flight. Okay. So maybe within the U S think of New York to LA. Okay. So completely across the country. Yeah. Completely across the country. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. So mm -hmm. when you were feeling that fear and just as like a general advice to anyone listening to about how to push past fear, how did you still get on that plane and move? Oh, I knew I knew it was the right decision for me. I knew my heart was telling me you should do this, but yet my mind was having those fear-based thoughts of what's going to happen when you get there, where are you going to work, what about money, all those thoughts. Sure. But when it really came down to it, I just I knew in my heart that I needed to leave Ontario, leave my comfort zone, do mm -hmm. something new. And at that point in my life, I was also, you know, feeling lost and wanting to find myself. And I felt like I needed to do that on my own sure. and create that environment on my own. So I think one of the biggest things is you do just have to listen, listen to your heart. You know, sure. our minds, they will chatter away sometimes. And sometimes our ego does put that fear around things, but mm -hmm. really letting go of that ego, letting go of those fears, those doubts, and just listening to what your body and mind is telling you. Because it will great. often be right. That's great advice. One thing that I've been intrigued about with your story so far has been how, you know, just then you talked about listening to your heart and obviously you've re re referenced intuition and, you know, really being in tune with your heart. And then you said when you were working your business and your mom was sick, you really kind of tuned in. A lot of people that kind of get 
into mindset, it usually comes from discovering something outside. So finding a personal development book or Tony Robbins or something like that. But it seems like yours came entirely from just soul searching. Am I correct in that? Or was there something else external that kind of turned you on to the idea of working on your own mindset and that you can control certain aspects of how things work up in your brain? It was definitely soul searching. But I think for me, one of the biggest triggers was when my mom got sick. And that was a very, a life changing moment for me, seeing mm-hmm. someone that you love and care about so much go through cancer, mm-hmm. seeing that person in so much pain and you just feel absolutely helpless and you can't do anything about it. Going through that experience with my mom changed everything. And through that, I really realized that we, we don't know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, hopefully I have a long, amazing life, but at the end of the day, we never know what will happen tomorrow, what will happen in a year. And Mm -hmm. so I think it's very important to, or for me, at least I realize that I want to look back whenever that time, that day comes and look back and say, that was fun. Yeah. And so for me, seeing what my mom was going through and that we as a family went through with her, that's when it all, for me, it had to change. There wasn't really another choice that I needed to start really living. Yeah. So it was always in me. I could always feel in me, but I needed something to really push me to actually do it. And then did you just sort of teach yourself how, how to make that happen or? I did. It was one of those things. I did a lot of reading up on that, a lot of reading online, but definitely a lot of it was I started with meditation. So sitting in meditation, actually taking that time to be still, be quiet. And that's when things, I don't know, just things started to really align. And there was these amazing magical moments and there was a lot of clarity within. I also really got into yoga. Mm -hmm. That was a time for me, not only for my mind, but for my body to really tune into what was going on and love and appreciate myself. That's fantastic. Now I'm curious with the meditation part, um, at least my understanding of the most commonly practiced, as far as I know, type of meditation would be kind of to try not to have thoughts. And when you have those thoughts, just kind of welcome them and kind of go back to trying to get your head silent. How does doing that help you figure out more about yourself? Or were you practicing a different type of meditation? No, I definitely, I often do that one. Um, Mm -hmm. I do try and focus on my breath, see those thoughts and let them go. But the thing is, is that it's hard to not have thoughts. Sure. So when I'm sitting there in meditation, those thoughts will definitely come. I think for me, I really do try and let them go. But you also really start to realize what thoughts come Mm -hmm. And for me, in my experience, I really started to see where my mind would go, where those thoughts would go. Mm -hmm. And through that, I was able to bring clarity around whatever that may be. And I actually found that through meditation, if I was struggling with something and I needed clarity on something, I needed answers, Mm -hmm. I would find that through that silence, seeing those thoughts come, watching them go, coming back to my breath, Mm -hmm. that I was able to solve a lot of what was going on. That's awesome. I'm so glad to hear that that's worked so well for you. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. I've interviewed a cancer survivor and my mom is also a breast cancer survivor. And there have been other people who have had not necessarily 
illnesses, but life-changing injuries. And all of them look back at it and say that it was something positive and it impacted their lives in a positive way. I don't know how things worked out for your mom, but it seems like at least it's had a positive impact on your life in some degree. Absolutely. She passed away. She had cancer for a year, just over a year, and then she passed away. And I was saying this to my dad not too long ago, that there's no way around it. What happened with her, that experience, you know, it's the most heartbreaking experience experience that I've ever gone through and Mm -hmm. the saddest thing that I've ever experienced. But through that, a lot of good did come from it. I really realized how much love was surrounded by my mom, how much Mm -hmm. love was in our family when people started to really pull together. Mm -hmm. And for me, I think what I have done, what I have accomplished and my growth, I do think that it always would have happened. Mm -hmm. I don't think it would have happened so quickly. Sure. It was really that push for me Mm -hmm. to get and do what I needed to do. Well, I'm so sorry for your loss, but it seems like you're kind of keeping your mom's spirit alive through doing stuff that she kind of instilled in you from a young age, it sounds like, and taking any positive out of a bad situation is definitely admirable. So absolutely. And it's one of those things that for anyone that has lost someone, I always like to say that they will, they will give you signs there's all these little magical moments that happen around us. And even though we can't physically see them, Mm -hmm. she gives me signs that her love, that she is still around me. Oh, I love that. What is a recent sign you've gotten? What is a recent sign that I've gotten? Well, I don't dream about my mom very often, Mm -hmm. but Every once in a while, if I'm going through something, I'll have a, you know, bit of a moment and I will ask my mom to meet me in my dream. Yeah. I need to see her. And, you know, it's not often that I ask that, but Mm -hmm. when I do, she always shows up. That's amazing. So I'll always wake up and I will... I'll be like, oh, I saw my mom last night. It'll just be this really amazing feeling. But I think one of the, also the really amazing signs was when she passed away, I used to always meditate. I had this candle. It was a battery operated candle. And when I would meditate, I'd always put that at the front of my yoga mat. Mm -hmm. When my mom passed away, I was with family and I came home And I was at my cousin's and I came home that night and I came into my apartment and that candle was on. Oh, wow. And I thought, oh, that wasn't on when I left and didn't really think too much of it. And then two nights later, I was with one of my best friends and, you know, we were having dinner and crying over the situation. She knew my mom quite well. Mm -hmm. And my friend dropped me off at night and I came home and I walked into my apartment and that candle was on again. And that's when I just kind of freaked out because I'd had that for over a year and it had never just turned on. So I knew it was her way of just telling me everything's okay. And her love is still around me. I'm still here. Wow. Mm -hmm. I have goosebumps. That's amazing. (laughs) And it's really amazing because when you start telling people stuff about that, it's amazing the stories that open up and that people share, but you have to be open to it. I was just thinking that, that, you know, I bet a lot of people ignore those type of things if they're not Mm -hmm. ready for them. (laughs) Definitely. You have to be ready for them. So obviously one piece of advice would probably be to, you know, meditate or open yourself up to things. What other advice would you give anybody listening to this podcast? 
anything that you've learned that's you know profoundly impacted your life or that you want to pass on something that i have i know that that's a like big question <laughs> no pressure <laughs> i think one of the biggest things that i practice and i would really recommend for everyone mm -hmm. and this is also another tool to use to kind of step out of our cluttered mind and be in the present moment is i think it's so important nowadays to take a technology break okay. and don't get me wrong i am on my phone a lot i'm checking email a lot mm -hmm. but i really think it's so important for everyone to step away from technology take a bit of a technology break and again be in the present moment for me every morning when i wake up i leave my phone in my room and for the first at least 30 minutes of the day i'm not mm -hmm. checking texts i'm not on social media and i'm not checking email mm -hmm. and just setting yourself up for the day and it is such a good way to also help you organize your day opposed to waking up and instantly jumping in to i have to do this i need to be here but sure. taking that time for you and i think that's one of the biggest thing is you have to take time for you mm -hmm. so take that technology break and do things that you love and enjoy i love that that you say that for the first 30 minutes in the morning because it's so mm -hmm. true that not only does it looking at your phone right away or your computer puts you right into to-do mode. But so many experts that I've heard of say that it also is reactionary mode because usually when you're checking your emails or checking social media, you're not posting, you're not creating, you're not doing things on your own terms. You're reacting to whatever people sent you from the night before or yesterday. So it's not even Absolutely. your morning anymore. You're giving it to everyone who emailed you or tweeted at you or whatever. What, how long would you say a good technology break would be? I think for that, it depends on the individual. For sure. myself, I do 30 minutes mm -hmm. in the morning, sometimes longer, you sure. know, and for sure, there's sometimes that it's shorter. It just really, for me, depends on the day. But sure. even in the evenings, I think that's important as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we can really get lost in social media you know on facebook and instagram looking at our feed looking at photos and there is a, a lot of amazingness within social media yeah but stepping away from that and what everyone else is doing and just really being where you are so i would really recommend for sure in the mornings that's a prime opportunity to start your day in a, a mindful way mm -hmm. and if you can do that at the end of the day as well yeah, and at, at, in the evenings, if you stop getting that blue light, if you stop, so it can help you sleep as well if you don't have blue light shining in your face from all Oh, definitely. <laughs> you do not want that. No. If anything, you don't even have your phone in your room. Yeah, that's what a lot of people recommend. I feel like it's so hard, especially as you know, a fellow entrepreneur, though, to disconnect for too long. I had a guest who challenged all the listeners to take an 18-hour electronics fast and I still haven't done it and it was months ago that's on my to-do list and I'm like I don't know when I can <laughs> go without for 18 hours I think I'll have to go camping or something to totally yeah. take myself out of it <laughs> maybe you should do it throughout your move you know pick one of those days when you guys are in transition yeah I and don't know. GPS. <laughs> <laughs> like, what did we do before we had these? I know, that's the thing, right? But we, we were able to, to yeah, live. Yeah, we made it. it. We survived. If I end up following my husband, maybe I'll do that. But then he wouldn't be able to communicate with me if he's driving the truck and I'm in the car. <laughs> so yeah. I'll figure something out. I will make it happen. But that's good advice. I love it. Mm -hmm. Um, perhaps low tech options, because if you don't read it on a Kindle or an iPad, I'm curious what books you have to recommend to listeners. So it can be books about, you know, your areas of expertise. It could be books you found entertaining, a book that's changed your life, any kind of book that you think people would benefit from reading. Some books that I think would 
benefit your viewers would be? I really like feel the fear and do it anyway. I didn't know that was a book. That's a saying I've been using forever. <laughs> yes, it's a book and it's so amazing. Awesome. I have to check that out. Mm, that one's really good. And then another one I really like that goes way back is The Four Agreements. Okay. By Don Miguel Ruiz. But I really like Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. And often in life, there's two ways to view things. Mm -hmm. Through eyes of love and through eyes of fear. And fear can be really good. Sure. But it's so important to not stay in that fear place. Mm -hmm. This morning, I actually did a video that I uploaded onto YouTube, and it was step out of your comfort zone. We often stay in situations, in places, and do things because it's comfortable. Everyone mm -hmm. likes to be comfortable. Sure. But it's so important to take that fear around whatever you want to do and turn it into something amazing. Mm -hmm. So step out of that comfort zone, step away from that fear and do it. That's pretty much the whole theme of the podcast. <laughs> yeah. It's, I love it. It's so good. It's, it's really important. And once we do it and we see and feel that, oh, you know, that wasn't that scary. I got through it. It inspires us to do it more. Yep, absolutely. And just really trust in ourselves that we're making the right decisions. And it's one of those things that I think often if we really want to do something and we don't do it, we are going to regret not doing it over doing it, even if it's not necessarily the exact outcome that we want. Mm -hmm. I think it's, um, what is it, the discipline of doing it or the pain of wondering what if, or there's some famous quote by someone awesome that mm -hmm. is basically that exact point. I absolutely love it. All right, so I've got my last question for you. It's my favorite question to ask, and that is if eight-year-old Sherry could look in a crystal ball and mm -hmm. see Sherry today, on a scale of one to 11, how excited would little Sherry be to see you now and what you're doing? I'm going to say an 11. I love it. That was a very calm 11 though. Do you want to elaborate a little bit? I would say that from when I was eight until now, I've done and grown so much mm -hmm. and it's work. It's definitely for me, you know, I don't think that you know, being happy and living a mindful life, it doesn't always come naturally. I really do think that we, we have to work sure. for what we want and how we want to feel. Mm -hmm. And I'm really grateful for where I've been, the experiences that I've had, and just overall how far I've come. Mm -hmm. So I think that she would be very proud. And I'm really proud of everything that's gone on. And I'm excited to continue on this journey and see what happens. I love it. I'm excited to see where you end up as well. And we'll be following you on social media to check that out. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for everything that you've shared today, all of the work that you do in the world. I'm so glad that there are still people, you know, working on mindset and looking deep within, even with all the distractions that there are. So thank you for coming on today and sharing with us. Thank you. And thank you for all that you do. I think you have something really amazing going on. Oh, thank you so much. I hope that you can take some advice from Sherry and really take the time to look within and to make sure that you are living life the way that you would hope to if you were to look back upon and see the legacy that you're leaving and see you know how many days you could potentially have are you living them to the fullest hopefully you are or if not hopefully you start doing that please check out the show notes at www.mandiem.com slash episode 103 
where you can find out how you can get a discount on Sherry's programs and get information on exactly which program you can get a deal on. You just have to send her an email and she will hook you up. Let her know that you heard of her on the Bold Moves podcast and that you could use some organization internally and in your environment and she will help you out. Now, of course, if you're new to the podcast, you might not be aware of the structure. I, on Mondays, do interviews with inspiring, amazing people who have stepped outside of their comfort zones, like Sherry has. And then on Friday, I do challenges from Monday's guest that help you use your inspiration and put it into action and actually step outside of your comfort zone. So stay tuned to Friday so that you can get Sherry's challenge. Also, make sure you subscribe and share this with all of your friends or if there's one specific person or a handful of people who you think would find it especially interesting, really extra share it to them. (laughs) If you're interested in being a guest yourself because you have made some bold moves or you know someone who has, I would love it if you went to www.mandie.com slash guest G-U-E-S-T, where there is a forum you can put all of your information or all of your friend you want to nominate's information, and then that way I can contact you and set up an interview. All right, I hope you enjoyed my chat with Sherry, and have an amazing day. Be bold and be sparkly. (laughs) Bye-bye.